Hello everyone, it's Ross Kelly, CEO and Realtor with Love and Realty and Investment Company, and today's episode of Simply Vidalia, episode number 12, is with the East Georgia chapter of the FCA. My special guests today are Mary Moon and Madison Strickland, local missionaries with the FCA. Guys, welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks for doing this. This is awesome. Yeah, I appreciate it. I thank you so much for letting us come into your office here. Uh, you got a great office. I see a lot of people milling around and working, so obviously you guys are very busy. Why don't you just start off by telling us, uh, Mary, a little bit about yourself and how you affiliated with the FCA and what kind of what your position is. So I started volunteering with FCA maybe eight years ago, nine years ago. It's been so long that I, I honestly lose track of time. Mm -hmm. And that's how I got exposed to it initially. It starts with a volunteer role. I worked as an athletic trainer for some camps that we have down at St. Simons. And being in that environment that we are able to create at camps just really opened up my eyes to what a relationship with Christ truly meant. Um, radically changed my relationship with Christ and through that I kind of started helping with my campus. Uh, I worked at Toombs County High School as their athletic trainer. Always had it in the back of my mind, man it would be great to really be a part of this ministry and to be able to spread Christ through sports to our coaches, to our athletes full time. Didn't think I would be able to do that here, ever. Didn't think an opportunity would open, but God had a better plan than I did. And so in 2012, I was presented with an opportunity to come on staff as an FCA missionary for East Georgia FCA, and I ran with it. I said, this sounds awesome. This is something that's been on the back of my mind. I feel like God's called me to this. And so here I am, working for East Georgia FCA and spreading the gospel to our local coaches and athletes and loving it. I love what I get to do every single day. It's funny how the stars kind of line up and, you know, the FCA kind of takes two passions, uh, people's love for sports yes. and love for Christ and puts them together and just does, you know, amazing things. Absolutely. That's our whole goal is to spread the gospel of Christ through the influence of coaches and athletes, whether it's collegiate, local level, uh, high school sports, professional sports, international here. Wherever it is, that's our goal, our goal. And it goes all levels. I mean, you see FCA doing everything from the lower levels of the different areas of sports all the way up to you have people in professional sports who are spokesmen for the FCA as well. Absolutely. Um, you, you cannot imagine. I mean, I think people do realize it, but when you wake up in the morning and I look at my news feed or if I turn on the TV, I mean, sports just inundates our lives, whether you play it or you follow it or you cheer for it or... You really just don't even want to focus on it. Some people just don't like sports, yeah. and that's okay. But they know who people are. They know who athletes are. They know who coaches are. And what better platform to spread Jesus Christ than through the platform of sports? You know, here locally, East Georgia FCA encompasses a pretty big territory of this area. It's actually seven counties. I oversee, uh, I oversee four of those counties, Montgomery, Toombs, Trutland, and Wheeler. But we also also have Evans, Emanuel, and Tattnall counties, and anything that goes on in the sports world, we are trying to rifle in and spread Christ through that. Well, good. We're glad, uh, very glad that the FCA uses that the vessel of sports to be able to spread the, the word of Christ. Yeah. Madison, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what your position is with the FCA? I'm actually an FCA intern right now. I recently took that job, and I will be interning until July, and okay. I'll move off to Truett, Truett McConnell University in August to play golf there, but I actually felt called to ministry through FCA. I started volunteering and I was on the FCA leadership team in middle school where I had the opportunity to speak and lead and lead devotions and learn what it meant to actually share Christ with my peers. So through that, God opened my eyes and was like, hey, you know, you have this passion. There's people out there that need Jesus and what better way than sharing the love of Jesus through sports and what you have passions about and things that you've went through than to actually get in there and get in their lives and build a relationship with them. So it was actually pretty cool that this opportunity has been presented to me because my call to ministry, not only as a Christian, but even further than that, as a call to ministry for a career, was through FCA. And now I'm actually right. getting an opportunity to be a part of FCA as a job and potentially as a career in the future. Well, awesome. Why don't you tell me about your first interactions with the FCA as you were coming up through, was it golf? Actually, um, yes, I played golf in middle school, but I was on the FCA leadership team because I wanted to lead and I wanted to 
love on people and have a relationship with them and learn more about Jesus. It I didn't even really know that it had anything to do with athletics at the time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Honest. I mean, I honestly didn't. Well, it's funny how the Lord takes uh, people and puts them in the correct places to mm-hmm. use them the way He wants to use them, and it sounds like that's exactly what He's done with both of you guys. Well, and I think, I mean, Madison admitting, um, you know, that she didn't know it was about athletics, but she knew it was about Christ. I mean, like, that that speaks volume. Yes. She knew that it was an organization that spreads Christ, and she wanted to be a part of that. So, I mean, that that is the core of what we do, and I actually appreciate that because yeah. it points straight back to what we're trying to do as a ministry. Absolutely. Yeah. Why don't you tell me a little bit of how the FCA works and how you get involved with sports and how, what kind of what is y'all's platform to for sports? Spreading Christ in the uh, you know athletics. So how FCA works? It's a sports ministry. We take a rival approach where we focus in on coaches and athletes, and like we've shared. We reach them on any level. Locally, we reach them on their campus. So that is a huge ministry for East Georgia FCA. We cover, like I said, seven counties, every campus inside that county, and 98% of those campuses have an active FCA ministry on their on their campus. That can look a little different on every campus. Madison mentioned being a part of the leadership team. Mm-hmm. Each campus has a leadership team that's make up, made up of students. They lead the ministry on their campus. They have huddle coaches who do an amazing job of leading the group of students, but they're the ones doing the Bible studies. They're the ones stepping up in front of their peers at their meetings. They're the ones sitting down with their team and opening up God's word and sharing with them. Leading by doing. Leading by example, leading Mm -hmm. by doing. They're the ones executing everything on the campus. They do campus events like Fields of Faith where they share their testimonies and encourage people to get in God's word. So the campus is definitely instrumental. It's also where a lot of our coaches are as well. And we have a coaches ministry that ministers straight to our coaches. We tend to find that that discipleship that they crave they're such in the public eye. They have a lot of people that are their friends. They have mm-hmm. a lot of people that want to be influenced by them and that want to influence them. We come in with a Christ-like approach. We're going to serve our coaches. We're going to disciple them in whatever way we can. We're going to encourage them. That could look like a Bible study with our coaches. A lot of the time it looks like one-on-one discipleship. So anything we can do to encourage our co- coaches and disciple them, it's another part of our ministry. We have a community ministry. I think the last st- statistic I read was there are like 54 million kids playing youth sports, and that's wow. not on a campus. Wow. I mean, that's in the United States. Where are the majority of kids? They're at our rec departments. They're playing five, six, seven year old soccer. They're on our travel ball teams, playing year round sports. We've gotten into that day and age. They play year round sports yeah, now. Do. So we have all these coaches in a rec department. We have all these athletes in a rec department. We have all these travel teams, weekend warriors, those kinds of things, people running on the weekends and stuff like that. What an amazing opportunity to spread Jesus Christ to them. It's a huge ministry. We have barely begun to scratch the surface of that as an East Georgia FCA staff. We need the manpower, and right now we don't have it, but we definitely have the opportunity to be able to go minister to them. One of my favorite parts of our ministry is our camp ministry. I, I, I was exposed to FCA from our camp ministry, I love it. I love how we create an environment where Christ can just come meet our athletes and coaches right where they are. And he doesn't hesitate to show up and he doesn't hesitate to show out. And anybody who goes to one of our camps, whether it's a team camp at Georgia Southern, whether it's a leadership camp for our athletes at Epworth by the Sea in St. Simons, whether it's coaches camp, whatever it is, I guarantee they will meet Christ there in some way, shape, or form. It's up to them to the receive to do the receiving, but we will present. And that's that's one of my favorite ministries. I could talk about camp ministry all day long. I love it. Well, that's great. And it sounds like the FCA really uh, you know, seizes the opportunity to get Christ and the Word of Christ in, a, in an audience that may, in other words, not have an opportunity to hear it. Absolutely. One of the things, and, and Madison can speak to this too, one of the things I've heard our athletes share um, is because it's on the campus, they can invite a friend or a teammate or a classmate to an FCA meeting. It's right there. They can be a part of it. And sometimes that's a little less intimidating than trying to get them to come to church with them. We love partnering with the churches. We are an extension of the church, of the body of Christ. We help point our 
athletes and coaches back to church. We help them get plugged into a church when they come back from camp, when they make a decision, whatever it may be. We've had coaches request who come into town, hey, I'm new to town and I'm trying to find some churches to go visit. Can you help me? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, we can certainly help point you in a direction. But it's a lot less intimidating for that athlete to say, hey, I'm, I'm going to FCA in the morning and I'd love for you to come with me. And I know I'm going to see you seven hours from now because we just got done with practice and we got to right. go home and eat dinner and do homework. But I'll see you at seven in the morning. Yeah. You know, uh, we'll have donuts, whatever it may be. So that's one of the things that I love so much about this ministry is it makes it so easy to be able to present the gospel to other people. And I think Madison can probably speak to that uh, personally uh, as well. Tell Speak us about your it. personal experiences. <laughs> hey, awesome. So like I said, I've been on the leadership team and it, it is very intimidating whenever we have leadership meetings and or not even leadership meetings, when we have school wide meetings and people don't show up and you walk up to them and you say, Hey, would you like to come to FCA? Would you like to be a part of it? You know, we're gonna have a Bible study, we would love for you to come. We have donuts and anybody comes when you have food, of course. Yeah. But there's actually been times where like personal experience this past semester um i walked up to people and was like hey you know we're having fca do you want to come and they said no we don't do the whole jesus thing yeah. and i said well why not and they were like well you know we only have a few more minutes left of lunch and i'd really like to enjoy it i don't have enough me time in the day and i was mm. like okay and they said well if you really want us to come then you come to us and i said okay so i grabbed my bible and i said all right y'all let's go and got the leadership team and we sat down at the table with them and actually opened up the bible and said you know what we're going to present it to you. If you don't want to come to us, we're going to come to you. Yeah. Because if you don't want to go to the church, if you don't want to go to the FCA meetings, we're here on campus. We can come to you. That's right. So FCA can do that. Churches can do that. And especially FCA, we have the opportunity and we have the platform. We're on the school campus. It's just a couple steps and we can get to them. We can take our Bible. We can sit down. We can have a lunch meeting. We can have a devotional with them. They don't actually have to say, I went to the FCA meeting this morning yeah. and get picked on. We can go to them and minister to them, meet That's their right. needs, be relevant to the people instead of them being labeled. That's right. And doing pretty much what you're as Christians, not just FCA, but any Christian is commanded to do. Is go exactly. And exactly. And if, if they don't have the opportunity to go to hear the gospel, then take it to them by Amen. all means. Yeah, exactly. And more than likely, they're not going to say no. And, it, and I, I mean, That's a good thing. And if they do, then okay. You love them anyway. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Love them anyway. So as an intern with the FCA, the local chapter of the FCA, kind of what are your duties? <laughs> I'm really big on social media right now. Um, okay. Not necessarily like promoting the fact that, like promoting FCA, I guess, because a lot of people understand what FCA is, but um, getting FCA more involved on social media. Mm -hmm. Because, like, face, we're doing Facebook, we're fixing to start our Instagram page, which is going to come out on March 14th. Yeah, follow Good. us on Instagram at EGA FCA IG. No, that's go. the hashtag. That's the hashtag. My age is showing right this second. It's so. at EGA FCA. <laughs> yes. Follow us on Instagram. March 14th, we have this huge. Day, it's like a huge launch date. Yes. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, you need to follow us. Cool. So we have these a whole bunch of stuff in mind where we're going to get um, students, athletes, coaches, everybody more involved on social media because mm. social media takes up almost everyone's lives. Mm. Yes, it does. It's the way of communication. It's the way people do ministry nowadays. Yes. So um, we're trying to be relevant to the culture. Mm. And yeah, very important. Yes. So that's what I'm coming in to do is kind of take over that part is the social media. Mary does a lot better with Facebook than I do. Just <laughs> um, Go ahead. I'm better with the Instagram and Twitter, guys. But yeah, Mary that's, does. That's an age yeah, thing. Okay. The Twitter. Yeah, that's what I would call it, the Twitter. Uh, <laughs> but the, the other thing that Madison's coming in um, for, we, we talked a minute ago about we, we don't have the manpower. I mean, we're going to get her plugged into campus ministry. She already serves on the leadership team at Badelli High School. We're going to start to work on getting into this community ministry. Um, we have the means, or we have the way, we, we have the means in Madison. Um, so we're going to work on those things as well. We just brought her in and this is what we're focusing on right this second because she's already got the brain for social media. Mm -hmm. So we know that's just another avenue to reach people with Christ. With all the stuff that's on social media yeah. today, 
we knew that this was an opportunity that we could spread the gospel through a post or a, a tweet. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So that's one thing that we have her little young mind taking care of right this <laughs> second. Well, good. You know, I tell people all the time when we get into this uh, debate about social media, uh, I challenge everybody, if you're riding down the road and you look into a vehicle next to you at the red light, if there's a passenger in the vehicle, probably 95 to 99% of them are going to be um, on their phone. And yes. the sad part is, is 50% of the drivers yeah. are yeah. looking at their phone. You know, So people are not looking at billboards anymore. Uh, things like that. Social media is where it's at. And uh, I think that you guys are going to find a great reward by trying to capitalize on that. Yeah. Yeah. It's been very rewarding so far. So. Well, good. Now, you guys uh, have a, a shortage of manpower. Yeah. Tell, tell the community. I mean, you got an audience right here, potentially yes. uh, five to 10,000 viewers. How can yeah. they help? So the ways to get involved with FCA, one, as far as manpower, we need volunteers. We need people who will come alongside of our teams and serve as character coaches. It's amazing. We used to call them chaplains. Now we're calling them character coaches. When you're trying to instill these values in athletes and coaches, integrity, serving, teamwork, excellence, which are our four core values. Those are the things we focus on. I mean, those are all biblical. Yeah. That's, those are biblical principles, you know, and, and kindness, compassion. Everything else comes straight from Scripture. So we need people to come alongside of teams, coaches, even adopt a campus, whatever. There are a lot of different ways that that can look like um, for a volunteer. So that's one thing. We always need prayer. For this ministry always everybody should pray for our coaches and athletes they are in the middle of a war that i i don't want to go back to high school i don't yeah, want to go back no, to middle school no. um, Me either. i i was an athlete uh i remember what it was like on the competition field and off competition field it was a mat for me but uh the competition mat and uh it i just you couldn't pay me to go back to face what they're facing no. um they're facing just fleshly warfare if you will so we need people to pray for them honestly the biggest thing supporting east georgia fca financially that is a huge part of how we accomplish what we accomplish we don't accomplish anything without financial support and honestly it's because that helps fund staff it helps put Bibles on campuses, we can walk onto a campus and place a case of 12 Bibles on a team and say, here you go. You can all open up the word together. And we get requests for things like that. I have nice. a request right now from a high school soccer team. They need team Bibles. It's not, we can provide those things for them and we're working on that right this second. So being able to do those kinds of things, but anything that comes into this ministry through our fundraisers, through our individual givers, through our corporate sponsors, it goes straight back out into the local community. That is a huge way that you can support this ministry is to financially support us. And tell people how they can do that. How can they make a donation to the FCA? So you can go on our Facebook page. <clears throat> There's a donate button on Facebook. You can also go to egafca.org, egafca.org and click on the donate button there and it's such a simple process i i pay all my bills online like that's yeah. just i think i write two checks yeah i write two checks a month and some people are going well what's a check i mean like that's <laughs> even we've gotten to that point um but you can go online to give to this ministry it gives back to people like Madison who are trying to lead on our campus. It gives back to our coaches' ministry. It gets back to our coaches' wives, their families, everything for us to be able to minister to them in whatever way. Like Madison said, we go to them. We do what they wish for, what they desire when it comes to building their relationship with Christ. That's right. So if people go to the Facebook page or the upcoming Instagram page, the web page you just mentioned, but if they still have questions, what's the phone number they can call? They can call 912-537-4002. And we have one of the best admins in the entire world. Her name's Gina Lane. She's usually the one who answers the phone and she can answer any of your questions or we will answer your question. Great. Yeah. Great. Was there anything else you can think about that the uh, audience might need to know about the FCA? Yeah, there's about 100 things. <laughs> I, mean, I, I can talk about uh, this ministry all day. You mentioned at the beginning, this ministry lines up a coach's passion for his sport, an athlete's passion for his sport with God's purpose for their life. 
I mean, we know that he has a plan. We know that he has a calling on everybody's life. And our job is to help them line up those two things. You just cannot deny the influence that an athlete or a coach has. Yeah. Billy Graham, I think, is who said that one coach will influence more people in one year than we could ever hope to do in a lifetime. I can believe that. It's The influence is huge. What better way to have them coaching than for Christ? What better way to have them competing than for Christ? I recently, um, I have an eight month old son. He'll be eight months old tomorrow. And when I found out that I was pregnant, it made this ministry that much more important because if Madison comes back and gives trip golf lessons, I'm going to know that we poured Christ into her and I'm going to pray that she continues to pour Christ out. The coaches who are coaching now, the athletes that they're coaching, they're going to hopefully come back to our awesome community and either be community coaches here or coach in the rec department or what a blessing to be able to coach on a campus or even higher level. Coach with a purpose. Coach with your passion, um, not just for your sport, but for your love of Christ. And hopefully we'll be able to introduce that to somebody who may not know who he is. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Well, I'm really excited to see what the FCA has going on in the area. I, for one, uh, am a little bit more expanded of the knowledge of the FCA now. And uh, I think this is a big deal. If you're watching this uh, episode and you don't donate or support the FCA now, really thinking about doing Mm -hmm. so, or really think about doing so because it's very important. And coaches uh, impact, like you said, a lot of people's lives. I just know when I grew up, just the one sport I did that I spent a lot of time around my coach and around my teammates. Mm -hmm. And had we all at that time been spending more time in the Word and talking about Christ, I mean, who knows? what could happen amen yes yeah. Yeah. well mary uh and madison thank you so much for having me and thank you all for what you do for the local chapter of the fca thank you i appreciate you. it thank you for having us well there you have it everybody the east georgia chapter of the fca i'm ross kelly ceo and realtor with lovin's realty we'll see you next time